Hi, my name is Nancy Love, and I am making this video on behalf of the Planet Peace Project, Truth and Freedom in the World. Let's just say I heard a rumor in March of 2010, and let's just say I had I heard that rumor from some extremely credible sources which will remain unnamed, but they were high-level professionals in the United States federal government. This video, if any of them see it, and they probably will, because the NSA gets everything to everyone all the time, uh, will probably serve as sort of like a, a, a video laxative, and they are probably going to... You know what, when they see what I've done, but here goes, because I am not supposed to tell people this, but I'm going to anyway. Yeah. Some U.S. government officials told me in 2010 that there was a night uh, at JPL, and I'm making this incidentally in honor and memory of Gene Roddenberry. Uh, franchise founder of Star Trek on very near his 101st birthday anniversary. He was born August 19th, 1921 and passed away in 1991. Can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm going to go ahead. Um, in March of 2010, some government people told me that there was a night at JPL that some people were there all night working on the Mars rover you know, controls and watching what it was doing. And there was this huge, huge um, plate glass window between a, a very wide hallway and the work room. Well, somebody noticed that there were some swirling, sparkling lights in the hallway. And so it was kind of like a column of swirling, multicolored, sparkling lights. And people were freaking out. They thought it was some sort of weapon, some sort of, they didn't know what to make of it. And security was called, and there were people in the hallway with guns and everything, but one lady yelled out, Don't shoot it! It looks like a teleporter beam from Star Trek! I'm sorry, I'm a creative genius, technically, but I can't make stuff like this up. I really, really did hear this from the United States federal government in 2010. Yeah, it was 2010. Um, so the people at JPL didn't shoot the column of sparkling lights, and over the course of the next few minutes, something appeared to materialize in there. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy, it was Gene Roddenberry. I'm not sure what year it was. Uh, now, I know he died in 1991 in this probable timeline, but in, in the column of sparkling lights that he appeared at that looked for all the world like a teleporter beam straight out of Star Trek, this guy said he was 92 years old, right? He was 92 years old, and he was dressed like, um, sort of like a Navy admiral, admiral. But he had these decorations, medals, and honors from the shoulder seam to the belt. And I'm quoting the government officials, plural, that told me this. In a conference call I had, incidentally, here's my cool drawing of E.T. Uh, so this guy... Starts talking to them and gives them various advice about um, various things they're doing at, at JPL and with NASA. He calls himself a time fleet admiral. And he talks about going through time, how his job at this point in 2010 is going through time and... Um, I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. In honor and memory of Gene, um, 
because I've known this for 12 years and I've told almost no one, but uh, here goes. He said that he was um, going through time, cleaning up probable timelines, trying to prevent disasters, trying to create better probable timelines in, in ones that had gone awry and so forth. And I think, would that we all were doing that. Would that we were all trying to prevent disasters and clean up probable timelines, huh? He also told the people at JPL that he had messages for his son and also for me. Uh, because I've been a friend of that family for, for many decades, actually. And my father knew Jean. So me and my family go way, way, way back with the, the Roddenberries, right? And so this guy said something about that he got some of those medals and honors on his uh, time fleet admiral, admiral uniform for bringing certain people across probable timelines. Yeah, and I can't help but think that that has some relevance to the Mandela effect. Because as we all know, some people appear to have died more than once. And that's not an error of collective memory. That appears to be true from what I can tell. So this is my very brief seven minute video about how in March of 2010, shortly after I witnessed a phenomenon that I could only call part of the Philadelphia experiment with Tesla rays included, in Glendale, California, Gene used to wink at me. Just winked at you for Gene. Um, shortly after I witnessed something that was definitely part of the Philadelphia experiment with Tesla rays included, I was told by the, some people at a government agency that Gene Roddenberry had teleported into JPL one night and said, tell my son I said this, that, and the other, and tell Nancy Love, thank you, and that he had gotten some awards and medals from something he called Time Fleet, which apparently seemed to be legitimate, uh, for bringing people across probable time. You don't get stranger things than the kinds of things that I know. I was born at a National Security Agency attached military intelligence base. And you couldn't possibly make up science fiction weirder than the things I learned when I was growing up and that I've heard since. This is In Love, The Planet Peace Woman. More later. I'm just getting started telling these truths.